All right, what we're doing today <clears throat> is we're gonna be adding a copper shim to the CPU and possibly the GPU on this laptop. It's been running just a little bit hot and I don't think anything's been modified on it since it's been purchased. So it's, it's a manufactured condition. <clears throat> so we're gonna to try to do what we can to drop the temperature and keep this thing as cool as possible. Uh, it's never gonna trump airflow. If you block the fan and the vents on it, it's just going to get hot regardless. Uh, but we're going to do what we can mechanically today uh, just to modify a few things. Got to have the right tools. I've got all different size copper shims here, um, different thicknesses. And we'll see what size fits best when we get in. You don't want to use, if you're going to do the GPU and the CPU, you want to make them equal, the same size. That way you don't have a gap in between the bridges on it. Got a pair of needle nose pliers, got a precision Phillips head screwdriver to take the screws out. I, I got my little pocket knife here so I can remove some things. And I've got Formula 6 um, thermal compound here that'll go back on it. Uh, generally on the manufacturers, what they send out is uh, Formula 5. Formula 6 is a little bit better. Formula 7 is the best, but it's a little more costly. So I just go with the Formula 6 and we're going to try to cool this thing down as best as we can. So let's get started. And I'll talk a little bit while I work, get through this. So you'll see what I'm doing. We'll turn it over and the first thing we take off is going to be the battery. I see that, there we go. Got to unlock it first so it'll pop out. And we'll take the RAM and Wi Fi cover off. We're going to have to disassemble the entire laptop to get to the motherboard. And I'll commentate a little bit as we go just to tell you what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Taking the RAM out. Now there's another stick of RAM on further in there and we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm going to take the Wi-Fi card off. Now this Wi-Fi card has a black and a white wire and this one happens to be labeled. If it's not labeled you can get an ink pen and kind of mark it a little bit on the, the paper if you have any or take a picture of it. Just remember which which one you're put, taking it off of so you can put them back correctly. And you won't have to worry about them being wrong. Now this one, a lot of them have screws. This one looks like it just has a clip that holds it and a spring loaded so it pops out just like that. And we'll go ahead and take these other two. This looks like a Bluetooth or WAN. So we'll pop these out of the slot so they'll be ready when we go to take it apart. We'll have to fight it to get it out. And anytime you take anything apart, you never want to force anything. You be gentle but insistent. Just remember that gentle but insistent. If you have to force it, if you have to put any great amount of force on it, then you're doing it wrong or some, you've missed something. <clears throat> and I don't have the manual. Generally, I just wing it on these. I've been doing this a while. I'm going to go ahead and take the screws out of the bottom because I know sooner or later I'm going to have to do it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. You'll see a lot of videos people have mechanic, mechanical or electrical screwdrivers that they use. I like using it by hand because if it starts to slip or the threads start to strip, I can feel it in my hand. You won't feel it with an electric tool. You'll just continue to strip it or you'll continue to round the head of the screw off. Then you've got a problem. And unless you've got extra screws to put back, You'll just have to figure something else out. So we're just going to take all the screws out of the bottom. And any of them that's the same size, I just lump them together. Doesn't matter where they come from of the same size. If you got 15 that are the exact same size and one of them that's different, the only thing you'll have to remember is the one that's the different size. Because you'll know everything else just goes back normally. <clears throat> 
I'm trying to do this as quick as possible. I don't want to eat up much time. And I'll try to speed this video up a little bit if I have gaps in it. And once you get them loose, if you can't get them out, I've got a magnetic tool that pulls them out. Or you can just take it over and shake it just a little bit. And these screws will fall out like this. I like using this green thing so I can find it really quick and easily whenever I shake it and the screws fall out and you just give it a look to see if you've all the screws has fell out and I still got two right here one right there so we'll go ahead and pop those out now see that one's internal so I'm not going to mess with it it moves with the board and these right here appears to be kind of a clip there pops that out like that and I'm just going to leave those screws inside of that it's like some sort of a ribbon or something there is that the hard drive okay small like I got all of those screws out. I'll turn it over, turn it on its side. Now I know for a fact these are for the display assembly, but I'll go ahead and take them out because I'm gonna have to take them out either way. I'll come back when I get this thing completely disassembled that way it'll save some time and save me some space on my video here all right welcome back I've got the laptop completely disassembled I've got the motherboard out of it <clears throat> be sure to touch something metal before you touch the motherboard got my pliers here just in case you got any static static's not good uh, anything on the motherboard that you do not have to remove, don't remove it. Just leave it alone as long as it's working. Don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, what we're looking for, taking loose the fan, and I see it's got a bridge. Here's the CPU, here's the GPU. This is a very good, very good one that we can use because it's got, it's got a heat sink, uh, a stock heat sink over the CPU, which they all do. And not all of them have the bridge that goes over the GPU. This one does. So we'll be able to do the shims and the Formula 6 compound on both, which should really help with the temperature. I'm not saying it's going to keep it ice cold, but it's, it's really going to help. So we just take it loose. Now these screws here are completely different than any of the other ones. So you definitely want to hang on to these on this specific motherboard. I don't, what model is this? This is a... What kind of motherboard is this? It's a Dell PP09S, whatever that is. So it's a 14 inch laptop, it's pretty small. All these components are really small in here. We're gonna get it done. And I found my magnetic stick. And this thing is amazing at picking up screws. Just a few inches away and it snaps pulls that screw right up to it so it's really nice but you have to watch out how close you get this magnet to the motherboard you don't want to just hold it on if you're going to pick up any screws make sure you got a good one and just pop them up just like that keeps you from having to dig them out with a knife or something like that my Phillips head precision screwdriver used to be magnetic on the tip but it's quite old and it's lost its luster on that so I've got these three screws out that should be everything that I have to take out. Well, there's the wire to the fan. Before I'm done, I'm going to take, matter of fact, I'm going to do it right now so I know it's done. Take a little air. Kind of clean it out a little bit. And we're going to just set that down right there. You see these pads that are on it? You can leave those on it. That's, that's not going to hurt anything to leave those there. Those were sitting directly on the CPU and the GPU, but we're gonna we're gonna shim them up with some copper shims. 
So I got my Formula 6 right here. And this is rather small. I don't need a whole lot. So we're going to go with these two shims right here are perfect. These are the last two of this size, so I might as well go ahead and use them and order some more of that, that thickness right there. We'll just put one for each. Doesn't matter because we're going to be putting thermal paste on each side. And I like to use the drip method on the thermal paste. Just take it, open it up, put a little tiny drop on the CPU, one little drop on the GPU, just enough so that when pressure is applied to it, it flattens out and covers the entire area. And we place the shim directly on top. Now you never ever want that piece of copper, no matter what size it is, to touch anything except for the very top. You don't want leaning, laying over. If you don't have a bridge that goes across the GPU, then don't put it on there because it's going to slide. If it slides off that you don't want a piece of loose copper roaming around like yard dogs in your motherboard area. Copper's a great conductor of electricity. I'm pretty sure everybody knows that. So we're just going to put a drop method again right on the top of the shim. A little bit bigger one because these shims are a little bit bigger. The more area you cover, the better. And there we go, another drip. And that's all we're going to do for the thermal compound. Then we're going to put our heat sink back on. Don't forget, stick the wire back through first. And that's going to sit there. It's got a very small fan, so don't expect a whole lot of power. And you want when you put it on there, which I didn't just do, you want to try to put it as flat as possible. You don't want to put it on it and try to slide it because you might slide your copper pieces out. So I'm going to pick it up just a hair and look. Yep, everything's like it ought to be. We'll line it back up. And if you don't have the screws that can hold it in place, last thing you want is a piece of copper slipping out of there. So I'm going to put my finger on it like this. Lock it back down. And whenever you put screws back in a laptop, snug it up. You don't have to put it on with a torque wrench. And you surely don't want to get a hold of one that's been done that way. And it, you have to strip something around the screw head off just trying to get it out. So no sense in going completely crazy. Just snug it up real nice and let it be that. Because these are not designed to hold a car tire in place while you're running up the road. There. And that's what we've done. And I've got those in place. And I'll come back. Also this piece of wire, I like to mention, this piece of wire was in the way. And like I said, if you don't have to take it loose, don't. So all I did was pull it over, stuck a piece of tape to hold it out of the way while I did my work here. And then now that I'm done, I can pull my tape off and put my wire back in the clip where it goes. And that's good. So now I've raised it up. I've put Thermal 6 compound. I also noticed this did not have any compound on it to begin with. I don't like that. All it had was those two little pads. I'm not a fan of not having any compound at all on anything. It's always better to do it, but I'll come back when I reassemble everything. All right, welcome back. Got everything put back together. I don't have any spare parts, so I'm assuming I put everything back correctly. I got everything secured, and I hope the battery has enough power to test it off and fire it off one time and see how it goes. It's got some power. Don't know how long it's going to stay on. It's posting. Time of day not set. Now I did unplug the BIOS chip, the CMOS chip, when I was doing it. So I just want to bypass that. I'll set all that up later. I just want to make sure that it does fire up like it's supposed to and doesn't give me any problems. And I'll do a test on it to see if it, um, see how cool it stays this time. It should undoubtedly be cooler. Now the only other thing you can do, uh, we've modified it all we can do to keep it cool. You can get a cooling uh, pad, one of the devices that you set on your lap and set this on top of it and it blows. I mean, it's a 14 inch laptop, so it's got a very small fan. It's not gonna put out a lot of, it's not gonna move a lot of airflow. 
Uh, but the last thing you want to do is cover the bottom vents and cover the fan area. You want to let it breathe. Uh, you don't want to sit on your lap when you're wearing jogging pants. It's just going to lock it up. So it's booting up. All right.